Hey guys, this is the tenth video in the libgdx desktop tutorial. I know it's been a while, um, so sorry about that. But uh, I'm going to continue now. So in the last video, which was part nine, uh, we pretty much have the basic game already finished. Um, we got the asteroids, shooting, collision, and some animated explosions here. They're not really animated, they're just like particles or whatever. We also can have the player getting hit and explode and then respawn. Okay, I just got insta-killed right there. Um, I'm gonna keep that in, so... The insta-kill. Whatever. Uh, so, in this video I am going to be doing the scores and lives. Um, so before I get started, I want to apologize. In the first video, I said that it doesn't matter which libgdx version uh, you download, but uh, apparently there have been some pretty substantial updates um, between the different versions of uh, libgdx, and the one that I have for this game is libgdx version 0.9.8. And um, if you want to continue following this, you're going to have to use the 0.9.8 version. And I'm going to have a link to that. These are the jars that you will need. This is all 0.9.8. <coughs> and uh, yeah, I'll just have a link to all of these jars. And uh, if you weren't using 0.9.8 before, then uh, I suggest you download this and replace all the jars with this version that I'm using. So, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to need some more jars uh, in order to use fonts. So, um, go into the Core Asteroids project and create a new folder. Just call this uh, res for resources. And over in the desktop asteroids, uh, the desktop project, we're going to do build path link source and browse and um, <clears throat> over here you're going to browse to the core asteroids project resources folder so just OK that finish and there we go so now you should have the original res folder in the core project and the linked res folder in the desktop project these two should be linked so just as a test if we add a new folder in the res folder in the core project, call it fonts, add it there, it should be added to the desktop project as well. There we go. And um, we're going to be using this thing called a the hyperspace uh, bold font. I'm going to have a link to this as well. So I'll just drag and drop that into the fonts folder. And again, since they're synced up, there it is in the desktop project as well. So that's pretty much it for that. Um, last thing we need is uh, a couple more jars to be able to use TTF files. We're going to use gdx freetype.jar. It should be in the extensions freetype uh, directory here. You can just find those in there. Uh, if you already have 0.9.8, otherwise you have to uh, download this from the link in the description. And um, so yeah, just put the free type.jar in the libs folder and add it to the build path. Right click, build path, add to build path. So there it is, similar to gdx.jar. So you should have gdx and gdx free type.jar in the reference libraries of the core project. And in the asteroids game, uh, the desktop project, we're going to put the natives. In here. So just add that to the build path also. There we go. You should have those four in the reference libraries. So that's pretty much that. Let's go ahead and add some uh, points. We're going to do points first. So go into player. We're going to put the player score in the player class since to me that makes more sense. Um, so I guess we can add some more fields down here. Private long score. I made score long instead of an int just in case anyone here is an asteroids master and they can score more than two billion points or something. 
extra lives. This is the amount of lives that we have. We're going to use that later. And the required score for uh, the score that you need in order to gain an extra life. In the original game, you needed 10,000 points for an extra life. So once you get to 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, etc., you get a new, you get an extra life. <coughs> so let's set those up in the constructor here. Just set the score to zero and extra lives. I think you started off with three. I'm not really sure. And the required score is going to be 10,000. So, <clears throat> over in the update method, where is it? Here we go. Uh, check if hit and turning, accelerating. Let's do it after checking if we're hit. Here we're going to check extra lives, see if we have the required score to gain an extra life. So, if the current score is greater than or equal to required score, then we're going to add an extra life and increase the required score by 10,000. Pretty simple. <clears throat> um, so that's pretty much that for player. Uh, we also need a couple of uh, getters in order to actually get the score. So uh, We can put it right here I guess. Um, public int get score. Oh wait, score is a long. My bad. Public long get score. Return score. Uh, might as well get the lives now. Public int get lives. Return li uh, extra lives. Um, what else? Whenever we die, might as well have a method for that. Lose life. Uh, extra lives. Minus minus. Public void increment score. Every time we kill an asteroid or a flying saucer, we should increment the score by some amount. L. Just do score plus equals L. There we go. And that should do it. So if we go back to play state, um, we're going to need some stuff here. First off, we can't use the shape renderer to draw fonts, strings basically, so we have to use something called a sprite batch. This is more for drawing, this is what you use for drawing fonts and images in general, textures and stuff. <clears throat> so that's the sprite batch, just import that and over in init, let's go ahead and create a new sprite batch, sb is equal to new sprite batch, and that's pretty much it. Um, so down here in updates. First thing we do is handle user input, check if we are in the next level, update player, player is dead, reset. Um, <coughs> so over here we're going to do player dot lose life. Since the player is dead, the player should lose a life. And uh, let's see, check collisions. Uh, that's pretty much it for that. So let's go ahead and try to draw the score onto the screen. So we have draw player, bullets, asteroids, particles. And down here we're going to do draw score. <coughs> uh, so just do sb.setcolor1111. One, 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 one. That's just white. And eclipse is freezing on me. Okay. sb.begin and sb.end. And in between that, we're going to draw the score, and in order to draw fonts... Oh, we didn't do any fonts yet. My bad. So, uh, all the way back at the top, we're going to do... Uh, we're going to use something called the uh, bitmap font. So up here, private bitmap font. Just call it font, and import that. And down here... Uh, this is where the free type jar actually comes in handy. Um, over here we're going to do set font. Uh, just We're going to use something called a free type font generator. And that's what the free type jar is for. And we're just going to call it gen is equal to new. I'm going to put it on the next line because it's rather long. Free type font generator. And then in here we're going to do gdx.files.internal and then 
uh, fonts slash hyperspace space bold. Wait, it's a lowercase s, I think. Let me double check. Uh, hyperspace bold lowercase s. Okay, dot ttf. <coughs> And that's pretty much that. So go ahead and import those. Um, again, if you're not using the libgdx version 0.9.8, you're probably going to have uh, errors with this. So again, if you're following this tutorial, you can either use the 0.9.8 that I'll have in the description, or <laughs> you can use the nightly build or whatever and try to figure it out. So anyway, uh, in order to create the font, it's simply just gen.generateFont, and then generate font, and then give it a size. We're going to use size 20, and that's that for the font. So all the way back down to draw, um, where we draw the score, sb.begin, we're going to do sb, or not sb, I mean font.draw, and we're going to give it the sprite batch that we're using, and then just draw the player's score. Player dot gets score like that, and we're gonna put it at position 40 and 390. I think that's a good spot. Let's go ahead and check. And there it is up there. Cool. Okay, so there's a score, but it's not incrementing because we're not doing anything with the score yet. And uh, we're gonna do that now. Um, so I guess the best place would be in the check collisions over here when we do bullets asteroid collision. Um, we have to do, uh, after the bullet hits an asteroid, remove the bullet, remove the asteroid, split the asteroid, and then over here we're going to do increment player score. But we have to know how much to increase the player score by, so let's go into the asteroid uh, class here, and we're going to give the asteroids a score. Private int score. <clears throat> now in the original game, the small asteroids were worth uh, 100 points. Oops. The medium ones were worth 50. Is it were or are? I'm not really sure how that applies to games. And the large ones are 20 points. Um, so that's pretty much that. And we also need a getter in order to actually get the score. So over here, public and get type should remove. Let's do public and get score. And just return score. Simple. So back in the play state where we, uh, where a bullet asteroid collision is, uh, we have to increment the score whenever a bullet hits an asteroid. So what we're going to do is player dot increment score by some amount L. And we're going to do a dot get score here. Cool. So let's see if that works. The big ones are worth 20 points, so let's check it. There we go. 20. The medium ones are worth uh, 50 points. So let me try to get one. Okay, and the big one, uh, small ones are worth 100. Cool. So it all works. Awesome. Um, so it's already 14 minutes into the video, so I guess I'm going to wrap it up here. And uh, I know I said I was going to do the lives in this video, but I'll do it in the next one. So yeah, in this video, just to recap, we simply just gave the player uh, a score, and it increments every time you kill asteroids. So yeah, that's it for this video, and I will... See you in the next one.